What's good everybody? Valor here once again. Welcome back to the Temporary Table, and this time we're taking a look at something quite interesting. The Shell Strike DS6. This is a break action spring-loaded barrel. Shotgun pistol that uses shells, and now these are the Trilogy shells, not the uh, Sledge Fire shells, unfortunately. Which, I actually have a sh Sledge Fire shell right here, and you can kind of see the, the difference in size there. The sh Shell Strike and Trilogy shells are much larger, which actually is pretty nice, considering. Especially if you're much into modification, so there's always that. But yes, this is... Irrelevant at the moment because we're taking a look at the shell strike. And yeah, it is break action. You just push down and it has shell storage for two extra shells down here. Now, the lower one has a little bit of a rubber piece down in here, which helps keep it in. I'm not sure how the top one is kept in. I am assuming about the same. Yes, there is. There's it's a, a rubber piece on the bottom. So. The only thing about this top shell portion is it's a little bit difficult to get your shells out at times. Like, especially if your hands are sweaty. So, there'll you could always pinch it and pull with one finger and all that, but, you know. It only comes with two shells, so if you need more shots, you can always get the expansion pack that comes with the rail, the, the rail mounted shell holder that mounts right here. And yeah, I've got three Adventure Force waffles loaded in here because I do not really care for the elites it came with. The shells are held loosely in there. And the performance is not as nice as you'd expect, but then again, it is a three shot pistol. I mean, this thing is about two hands big, where the sledge fire was much longer. But then again, the sledge fire was going for a more shotgun look. But the ranges on this are eh, okay for stock three shot rival rival stock three shot elite blaster. Let me get a single adventure force waffle here, so I can give you at least a single shot performance through the chronograph. Let me fire this up. The priming handle is a little bit funky. It reminds me a lot of the Poe Dameron blaster from the Star Wars line, where it's. There's no real, like, loop or anything. It's just kind of a, a thing built into the blaster. I per would have preferred a slide, if anything, especially considering, you know, it would have been easier to just, you know, pull slide back, fire, rather than this. But, eh, I can kind of get over it. Uh, let's fire one shot through there. Eh, double red bows hitting around 60. So, not, not fabulous, but, you know, for a stock Nerf pistol, Okay, that one actually hit 60 perfectly. And keep in mind, that is with the heavier darts. So that's always something to keep in mind. And you can always use a custom 3D printed shell or something, which is an option. Uh, there are loads made by Radioactive, but I'm not sure how well they work, at least with a stock blaster. The release lever is on the side here. It's a little bit funky to get to, especially with the sort of lip that the whole shell is right here. So you have to kind of change your grip slightly to break it. But then again, you know, it's something you get around. And if it really bugs you, you can always make a lever extension that kind of sticks out and goes a little bit lower. So you can just hit like that, similar to the Vortex Blasters that had the mag release on the side where you can hit it with your thumb, which I really liked personally. And yeah, there's that. Now you can put the shells in either way. They tend to hold in better with the, uh, the front of the shell facing forward, so. That's something to keep in mind. Let's load up this other shell and prime it back. Now, prime is decently weighted, and I mean, that's, eh. I mean, if you needed a close range shotgun secondary or something, this would be a great option. And I already have a friend who's wanting to take one of these, chop it right about here, and mount it upside down on a blaster. So he'd basically have a, you know, a shotgun master key that actually uses shells. And with the way this thing opens, let me demonstrate that again. If you open it upside down like this, oh, you pull up, the shell basically just falls out due to the angle that the barrel flips up at. That way, then you could take a shell, shove it in like a so, close it up. Now, one thing about closing the breech on this thing 
is this thing has two clicks to the closing. The first one is getting it past the plunger tube and everything, and then there's a little bit of a gap here. You can see it's tilted downwards. That will not give you a good seal. You need to make sure you click it down fully, and then you've got a good seal. But yeah, the plunger tube is actually exposed right there. Like, similar to the sledge fire, which has a plunger tube right there, this one has the plunger tube much more exposed. And this thing, it looks about the same size plunger tube as a sledge fire, so there is that. I'm just not so sure about how strong the priming mech on this thing will be. I might end up having to take the piece here and completely remove it and then swap it out for, say, a Delrin plunger rod or something, which is something that is fairly easy to do. I mean, you can always fiddle with the insides of this and make it completely yours and make it absolutely crazy, similar to how we do with the sledge fire here, which this one primes a different way. You simply just pull back on here and then the act of opening the whole breech barrel thing primes it as well as, you know, ejects the shell a little bit and opens the breech for you to load another one in. We're gonna get a little bit of firing footage of this thing. Gonna break the thing open. Got some Adventure Force waffles to start off with. Closed, make sure it's all clicked down. Try it back, and the bird bath there is about 30 feet off. So, we'll see if it's at least HGZ worthy. And I'd say it's hitting about 20 feet, so. There's that to keep in consideration. That was with a roughly flat shot. Going to slap another one in and angle it slightly. A little bit farther. Let's load up a couple more shells. Now you can load the shells while they're in the breech, you just don't want to push back too hard, otherwise you'll de-click the uh oops, sorry. You can front load these shells while they're in the breech here, but you don't want to push too hard or else it'll de-click your, uh, your breech closing mech. I've got some dart zone bamboo darts. I'm gonna pry it back. Make sure that's closed. And about the same. Drop another in. At least it's consistent, if nothing else. I mean... That one hit a little farther. I was getting a little bit more of an angle. Let's load up a few more. I do like these shell holders on the front here because it does make it fairly easy to just quickly load up some more. We'll go with one that has some elites in it. Even though I doubt they'll... Well, actually for a shotgun that might make the sprite a little better, so... Yeah. The foam on the, uh, the elites is much lighter, so. But another nice thing is if you are able to pick up your darts and shells between matches, you can just tilt it out and just let it lie on the ground. It would be nice if it were slightly easier to drop these shells in, but I guess with enough practice you can get good at it, so. And it's fairly consistent, so. The spread was decent but it doesn't hit the farthest ranges, so that is something to keep in mind. But with some modification, it should be quite good. But yeah, like this is definitely interesting and it gives us another blaster that uses these shells, which with the sledge fire shells, I don't believe there's any other blaster that used them other than the sledge fire itself. So it's always nice to have another thing to use these shells and we have printed options available if they ever stop selling those expansion refill pack things with the rail holder and all that. But I think this is great as a little secondary pistol, especially for the size. And the grip, even though my hands are a little bit larger, this fits just fine. Like the front of the grip here is a little bit on the square side for my liking. I'd prefer it slightly more rounded, but then again, it makes it a little bit easier to grip in a way. And you know, with as with the modern Elite aesthetic, lots of this stuff is not even painted. It's just separate pieces of plastic. So there is that. So that will be quite interesting to paint. And yeah. All right, everybody, that was the Shell Strike DX 
FDX, DS6. Let me know what you think of this thing down in the comments below. Oh, I also forget to mention the price. This thing cost me the princely sum of $16 with tax. So it is quite an affordable little Nerf pistol. It's about the same price as a Kronos if you get them around MSRP. So there's that. But yeah, let me know what you think of this thing down below. I'll likely end up doing a mod with this thing. Uh, I've considered cutting off the shell holder on the bottom, but I'm not so sure. Like, having, say, a couple 3D printed shells that can, like, have a Mega in it or have one for Rival, as well as the original three-shot shell. What do you think? Would that make it more useful as a secondary? I don't know. Like, having... A, it's like with the Spring Thunder, I feel, where you can have multiple different shells with different ammo types all in them. So, yeah. There is that. As ever, my name is Valor. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Patreon, if you want to help me keep this channel running, if you want to support me and basically give me a tip for all the stuff I do for blasters and all that. As ever, my name is Valor. Thanks for watching.